What's going on everybody? Gunnar Bramer here and uh, I just hiked in about two and a half miles to the middle of nowhere to take you guys smallmouth bass fishing on the new slow jig clouser which is really simple fly uh, basically you know Bob Clouser inspired slow jig and so you got a big bulky head on it three dimensionally sound flash throughout the whole fly um, and a really cool accented head that smallies just dig so that's what we're gonna do I got my slow jig clouser uh, HM, or, uh, <laughs> I got my St. Croix rod a weight mojo bass I got a nice long leader on this floating line setup this fly is designed for a floating line which is something that I don't do very often. And that's why I needed it, right? I talk about the infant fly fishing principle. I talk about tying variations to meet different styles, different needs, different water conditions. Well, you can't really fish a jerk junior or a fuzz junior on a floating line. And the beautiful thing about a seasoned geezer, which is what this is kind of a variation from or a derivative of with the head design, um, probably my all time favorite single hook fly. When it's on a 4X long size 4 classic hook, very trout oriented. Um, and smallmouth bass fishing, largemouth bass fishing, I really love a short shank, kind of thicker wire hook right at the head of that fly. And that's what this is, is why I came up with the variation. And the beautiful thing about the bucktail tail, great movement. I think people think bucktail is really stiff. When it gets wet, amazing movement, very supple action, rarely fouls, great place to wing flash boo. Winging the flash boo allows me to tie it three and a half inches, four inches, five inches, and then you just palmer the brush relative to the length to get the correct teardrop orientation, if that makes sense. So I can tie it, you know, three and a half, I can also tie it five. So that's the slow jig clouser, eight weight mojo bass, floating line, and let's work this nice little seam right here. My leaders wrapped like the dickens around my rod. First smallie of the day. Absolute tanker. Check this guy out. A full like seven inches. Yeah, buddy. Go get bigger. I'm gonna have some rules at the end of this. Three ways, maybe it's two, I don't remember. Uh, uh, how to catch more fish wade fishing. That's gonna be the topic. So stay tuned for that. Watch to the end. these little guys here that are super darn aggressive <laughs> there was two of them going after it oh okay there's bigger fish in here I promise we'll catch one are you guys watching this is this for real ridiculous that's what we're looking at trophies I forgot to turn oh what <laughs> what this is unreal uh, Y'all should really tie this fly. It's absolutely killer. <laughs> Calm down. There you go. One of, one of my rules here for catching more fish, and this is so practical because I'm catching fish and I'm not even fishing, right? Rule number one, always keep your fly in the water. I don't care what you're doing. If you're wading upstream, if you're wading downstream, if someone, if your partner hits the anchor and drops the anchor on, on the boat, if you're talking to a camera, you always, no matter what you're doing, you have to leave your fly in the water. You can't catch fish if your fly isn't in the water. Very simple rule. Oh, I just this one. It's so simple, right? Just leave your fly in the water. But here's the practicality, right? I know I'm not, I'm not talking towards the mic. Here's the, missed one. <clears throat> Here's what's practical though. If I wanted to say walk downstream or walk upstream, so many people are actually gonna re reel up, put their line on and start walking across. And that entire time that they are walking, they could be fishing. And it's not an active presentation, but it's guaranteeing that you're not missing water. You're not wasting water, right? Because I've caught, four or five fish in this little thing. I haven't even casted more than 20 feet of line. 
and I've caught two of them back to back just because my fly was wet. It was just in the water. And if I wanted to walk upstream, I'll show you what I'd do. I'm gonna cast out and just walk. So I repositioned myself while fishing. Don't ever take your line up. Always keep it wet, always keep it in the water. And if you're walking downstream, same thing. But say now walking downstream, I can let it swing. I can slow it down, I can dredge it, it's very passive, so now you're getting a different retrieve style, a different presentation, you might be hitting a different depth zone. Don't ever just bring it in to go somewhere, to walk somewhere, always leave it in. If you, you, know, if you don't have to go on the bank and walk around a tree or something, always roll cast it out and let that fly hunt because it'll put you on two, three, four, five, ten more fish on a trip just because your flies went. been catching a boatload of freaking 10 inches, but I think we need to up our game here. So that right there is the slow jig clouser. Really fun bug. Floating line setup, kind of skinny water. Nice little slow drop to it. Awesome teardrop bait fish silhouette. I know there weren't any monsters in there, um, but still a fun bug and hopefully check it out, tie one up uh, and give it a fishing. So that's what I got for you guys. I'm going to head back over to that hole. I got another fly to film for you, the Firefly 2.0. So, let's get to work. Firefly 2.0. And it's it's uh, kind of just an update. We got a laser hair tail. This is a, a new product from Greg Zanio. Really cool, supple, synthetic, very low water rate, great uh, movement to it. Uh, but what I want to show you guys right here is I have a magic head, a Mark Petitjohn magic head. And it's soft and it's flexible and it's uh, bent backwards over itself right now. And that is how you get access to the hook eye to tie your knot. And when you're done, you simply bend it back out. Now what the magic head does is it physically fills with water pressure and then spills over. And because I have a nice wide gap hook, whoops, sorry about that, a nice wide gap hook, and I cut a slit into my, into my magic head, which allows the water pressure to escape out the bottom. It gives it a side-to-side, -side aggressive, almost crankbait wobble that's absolutely killer. Now, it's actually designed for a full sinking line. I'm gonna try to fish it on a floating line, but I got some split shot. Um, that's just the rig I brought today, so we're gonna try to make it work. And uh, let's see if we can get some smallies to eat this thing. So for you guys uh, checking this bug out with the floating line setup, all I'm gonna do is take one small bead of split shot, about a foot up my leader, nice, really small there. Give that a little bit of jig and dive so that fly stays subsurface, the full retrieve, and I'm not fighting that cone with my floating line. Got a nice firefly eater right here. Oh, stuck right in his jaws there. One of the better ones from today. Probably a nice little 14. Nice little 14, that's an odd sentence, but firefly. So my favorite thing about this fly here is your ability to fish it while heading downstream. Let me dry my hands off real quick. Just inhale the mosquito. So you kind of cast out, you passively let the fly swing into the sweet zone, start running up the bank or around a structure or whatever you're doing. And because it has that cone, it's just the moment that water tension touches the front of that fly, you cast it out, you get it in the zone and you add tension to it, it starts wobbling and swimming and going all over. You can thump it, thump it, thump it. And it's a really fun streamer to fish upstream. Okay, cool. So here's rule number two. Keep your fly in the water, but it's a different version. Fish every cast. Um, and what you don't know is because you're not sight fishing, 
you don't know that your fly didn't just land in front of a fish and land right on his nose. And just because you wanted to get that farther boulder doesn't mean that he wasn't at the closer boulder. And because it's a straight line cast and a straight line retrieve, if you cast out, don't like it, pick it up and cast just for three more feet, well, you just lined every fish between you and, and your fly landing, and all you get is now is a three foot retrieve because you just disturbed everything between you and your fly, if that makes sense. So if you cast out, this is a streamer, guys. Like, you're fishing between you and that fly, wherever that fly lands. And that's gonna be part of rule three that I'm gonna get to at the end of this. But fish every cast. So many, if you cast out, pick up and then cast again, one, you just disturbed everything between you and the fly. You especially disturbed the area around the fly because you just smacked it down. And all you gained was three feet and you basically just ruined that cast, the whole cast, and you spent twice as much time, sorry for the thumb, twice as much time casting. If you cast and you miss by three feet, fish it. Fish it all, all the way in. That's gonna be rule number three, but fish it and then make another cast three feet farther, especially when you're wade fishing, because it's not like you're missing an opportunity. I'm not blowing past structure here that I'm not gonna get a second chance at. I get to hit the same rock, every rock, I could spend all day trying to hit the same rock, right? There's no rush. If you miss it, fish the fly, try again, all right? So that's rule number two, because it's going to keep your fly in the water longer. It's going to stop you from unnecessarily casting, and you're not going to ruin that opportunity that maybe your fly actually landed in the right spot, because you don't know where these fish are. Obviously, you can see structure, you can see buckets, but if you see this water, I got about six inches, maybe a foot of visibility. I can't see every hole. I, I don't know where every ledge is. And uh, you know, streamer fishing is all about covering water. You're just looking for players. And if you take that second step, that second cast, because the first cast wasn't right, you basically just wasted an opportunity at a fish that you didn't know was there. So fish every cast. I have a fish on? I do have a fish on. <laughs> okay, so rule number one, always fish your fly. I was just navigating a little embankment there, thingy-mabobber, left my fly in the water, left my fly swimming, and I got a nice smallie on the firefly who's now currently in my stripping basket. What's going on guys? <clears throat> so, I was fishing the slow jig clouser on the way down. Whew. I moved two really nice small mouse right off this boulder, but it's like flooded right now. The water's super high. So I'm up in the woods, kind of, getting eaten alive by mosquitoes. I just switched up to the Firefly 2.0, and I'm gonna try to bomb out a roll cast and see if I can't get one of them to eat it. And that will take us to point number three. Y'all just missed a really small bath. <laughs> so I'm gonna give you point three here. Rule number three, fish your fly to your feet. So many guys, they'll cast out, they'll fish it for like four or five strips and then they're done. So many times, smallmouth will tail a fly all the way to the bank. They will just tail that sucker. I don't care what you're doing, they tail them. Um, you gotta fish it to your feet and plus, I catch fish off the bank all the time. All you gotta do is fish about 20 feet of line. Like, I got a big weight forward head on here. I don't think I've had the head out until now because I'm trying to roll cast about 50 feet. I've literally fished 20 feet of line all day. All these fish, 20 feet of line. Like, I am not casting a long way. Pick your water, hit your seams, fish every single cast, and strip it all the way back to your feet. Obviously, you don't want to get your fly line inside your last guide or else you'll kind of screw yourself and dink around trying to get that out. But fish it to your last guide, basically. Or your, yeah, your first guide, last guide, however you want to calibrate that. But fish it to your feet because so many times the fish follow it, so many times the fish are on the bank, so many times you're gonna cast out strips to strip, pick up, 
and you just lost a fish because he ate it right when you picked it up. Keep fishing it, keep trusting the cast. And obviously it's different if you pattern the fish and you know they're right on the bank or you know they're on that first shelf and you strip over that first shelf, you got nothing, okay, pick up and cast again. But that's after you've patterned something. Before you know where those fish are, make sure you fish that fly all the way to the bank because that's your best chance at catching a fish. Maximizing the time your fly is in the water, you can't catch a fish if your fly is not in the water. So basically that one rule, you can't catch a fish if your fly is not in the water, summarizes all three rules, but hopefully those help put you on more fish while you're wade fishing.